Hello everyone and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series part 1.5. I am Guillaume Coré and in this part we're not going to make any progress on the game itself so feel free to skip to part 2 if you are in a hurry. However, we will take a look at some generic points I had to give up on part 1 in order to keep it short. So there are primarily three things I want to talk about and they are the shading, the physics type and the collision bounds. But before I do that, I want to show you my splash screen so that you know that I'm using Blender 2.6 revision 41226. So that's all great, let us start with the shading. The shading in, or the graphics, if you like, in the game engine are strictly dependent to the shading in your 3D viewport. And to prove you that, I'll go in wireframe view, then press P, and you can see that I'm still in wireframe view even if the game is started. So that, now that we know that, there is three ways to influence your viewport, the shading in your viewport. There is the viewport shading here. Under the N menu, under display, you have this multi-texture material mode option. Well, I don't really know how to call it all between shading and material mode, but here it is. And the textured solid button here. Now, if we made the multiplication, this gave us 24 possibilities, which is a lot. However, we can easily reduce that number with elimination. For example, textured solid does have an influence on the viewport, but does not influence the game at all. So we can ignore it. Same thing for wireframe and bouncing, bounding box that are not very options for obvious reason, which lead us with only two choices, solid and Texture. Now, if you want, if you want textures in your game, the only viewport shading that will let you see them is textured. So that's the one we're going to use because I really doubt you don't want textures for your game. And under the material mode, the only option that will give us all the power we need in order to have professional-looking textures are is GLSL. Multi-texture will let us have more than one texture if they have an alpha channel, but it is less friendly user and it, it misses some key features like normal mapping. And finally, single texture is really hard to use and can hardly have the texture on it, and personally I will just recommend using it. So to make a long story short, viewport shading textured, shading GLSL. So that's all for the first part, uh, the first point that was the shading. The second point is the physic type. Now, the physic type is the way your object is going to behave in the game engine. The way it's going to be affected by the physic, the way it's going to be affected by the other objects. And the physic type you're going to use the most is stat static. Static are for objects that won't be affected by the physic. Uh, they are great for levels, for props, for characters sometimes, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the next two that you're going to use the most are rigid body and dynamic. Now these two are very similar, and instead of explaining you the difference, I will only go in the in my second layer and you can see that I have a static level. The blue box here is a dynamic object and the red box here is a rigid body. So if I make my screen bigger and press P to start a game engine, you can see that the two bugs are falling the same way but when the red box touches the edge it starts to roll and that is the difference between the two. Rigid body will have its orientation, its rotation influenced by the game, and dynamic won't, which make rigid body good for cars and certain props, and it makes dynamic good for characters and other props. Now for the others, they are a bit more obscure to me, uh, and I don't know them as much as I do for the for the three I've just explained to you, so. I'll do my best to explain you as as I can, but don't take everything I say as the ultimate truth. So the first one we're going to, do, to take a look at is the sensor. Sensor cannot be detected by the other objects and 
they don't restitute collision, which means that you will pass through. However, they can detect the others by every mean. No collisions are very similar, as they cannot be detected by the other and do not restitute collision. However, they can detect the other, but not with the collision sensor that we'll see in the next video in part 2. Occlude is very dark and mysterious to me. From what I've read, uh, heard of it, it is supposed to be a way to prevent calculations by hiding objects inside. But I've made some tests and it wasn't very concluent, so I don't really know how to use it, but that's what it is supposed to do. Soft bodies are very fun. They, they are bodies like elastic that will, they can be used for simulation of cloth, clothing simulation, or for bouncing ball, things that will move around and bounce on the walls and on the floor. They are fun to play with. I recommend you to have some tests with them, but they don't seem to take the logic brick very well. And finally, we have this navigation mesh. There is a totally new physics type. I haven't played with it yet, but from what I understand, it is used to make pathfinding. So, that's pretty much for the second point. So, to sum it, sum it up, we have static that is used most of the time, dynamic and rigid body that are used the rest of the time, and if you have some precise physics type that you want, you have some other options. So let's move us to the last point, that is collision bounds. Now, what are collision bounds and how do they work? Collision bounds are invisible mesh that Blender will put around your object and then it will calculate the collision based on this object and set instead of your to save on calculation time and processing power. The way it works is that you have to press this collision bound checkbox in order to tell Blender that you want to use them. But at this point you might wonder, well, what happened if I don't press it? Well, if you don't press it, multiple things can happen. If your object is a static object, Blender will calculate each face so that you can collide with each of them without any problem. Which is, which is very good for levels, like this one right here, but is very bad for props. But if your object is a rigid body or a dynamic, Blender will put a collision sphere around it. And you can see that sphere by going in any view other than texture, and you can even make it bigger or smaller by playing with this radius slider here. So that's what happens if you're using, if you're not pressing this collision bounce button. But as I was saying, if you want collision bounce, you have to want press it, and secondly, to choose what collision bounce you want. Now, the shape of your object isn't the most important thing in this. What is really important is how you want your object to behave in the scene, how you want the other objects to collide with it. So even if your object is a sphere, if you want it to collide with the other as if it was a box, use box. But sometimes, simple shapes like cone, cylinder, sphere, box and capsule won't do the trick and you will want more complex collision bounds. And in those cases, you use convexal and triangle mesh. I don't really know the difference between the two, but how they work is that Blender will use them to make a very personalized collision mesh around your object that will give you very accurate collision at the cost of processing power. Once you have choose your bound, you're pretty much ready to go, except that I want to bring your attention to this margin button here. And to explain it to you, I will just read the tooltip that says extra margin around object for collision detection, small amount required for stability. And after some testers, I can say that the tooltip is right. Small amount will really, really help the collisions. And if your object is being stuck in wall or in floor at places that it shouldn't, try to increase this margin amount and it might help you. So that's all for the third point that was collision bounds and for this tutorial. So to su quick sum it up, we have learned about 
shading in the game engine, about physics type, and about collision bounds. So I hope you have learned something from this video and that you have enjoyed it. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in part 2.